All right, I'd like to start out by saying Barakat Yahweh, Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai, Ba Hashem Racha Kodash. Welcome by saying Barakat to another live lesson. Uh, the name of this one is Building in the Spirit, January 31st, 2021, the year of hastening the coming of Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai. And um, as always, I like to start off these lessons by saying this is um, a lesson based off of, you know, whatever comments, I'm sorry, whatever precepts brothers put on a comment board, you know, we'll just build from that and build a lesson off of that and um, take it from there because, um, you know, we, you know, there's times when we put lessons together, you know, have a topic and just put the lesson together There's other times where You know you just flow in the spirit You know there's other brothers that do lessons Similar to that um, But You know there's times where You may not have a topic but you You know you have that The um, spirit to go live Or to do a lesson And you just flow in the spirit So whatever precepts brothers Put up on the comment board uh, We'll just build from there um, just like uh, Yahweh Shai told um, He told uh, Nicodemus That you don't know where the spirit is going And you don't know where the spirit is coming from You know And you have those that are born of the spirit Beautiful The brother Gabar Adama We're going to start off there uh, Revelation 18 and 4 And I heard another voice from heaven saying Come out of her my people That you be not partakers of her sins And then you receive not of her plagues So we're going to build off of that and pretty much, uh, let's go to that. You know, it was taught years ago that that was speaking about fleeing America, you know, um, you know, because you have to leave this place because, uh, you know, the missiles are coming, you know, so you don't receive a place. You have to get a, you have to get a, um, a, tra a passport, you know, to catch a plane, plane ticket and all that to leave out of America before the missiles come. Well, that's not the case. The answer to Revelation 18 and 4 is in Revelation 11. And we're going to go straight to the point and we may jump up a little bit. Uh, Revelation 11, 11. Matter of fact, let's go straight to the point. 11 and 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in the cloud and their enemies beheld them. So the answer to Revelation 18 and 4 of come out of her, my people, this is a voice. He said, I, and I heard another voice from heaven. See? Saying, come out of her, my people. So, this is the voice that they heard. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and the enemies beheld them. Because when the devastation starts to come here to America and the missiles start hitting, the only way out of here, out of America, is to go up into the chariots. This is why it says, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that you be not what? Partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. So when we go to Isaiah, the 26th chapter, the 20th verse, it says, come my people, enter thou into thy chamber. So that voice is going to call up and the elect are going to be beamed up into the chariots. Let's go to our first Thessalonians uh, chapter four. And verse 16, it says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, see, and with the voice of the archangel. So you see how all of these scriptures are interconnected one with another, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So it says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, because that's where Yahweh Shai is coming from. He's coming from the sea, as the scriptures speak of in Second uh, Ezra, the 13th chapter. It says, With the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of the Most High, because there's seven trumpets. And once that seven trumpet blows, that's it. That is the end. It's finished. It says, and the dead in Yahweh Shai shall rise first. So when Yahweh Shai comes and says, come up out of her, my people, the ones that are in the graves that die in the Lord are going to be the first ones to be uh, uh, resurrected and go up into the chariots. And then the rest, and it goes on to say, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Which is what? The chariots. 
It says to meet the Lord, Yahweh Bashamel Shai, in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So this is what is meant. Uh, it says, wherefore comfort one another with these words, because these words are comforting, because we know that there is hope. And that is what is meant by Revelation 18 and 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you, then the, and that you receive not of her plagues. Why? Because the Lord is about to judge this place. And being here in America, the only um, salvation, the only protection is going to be going up into them chariots. You can't go, you try to go to a shelter. The missiles are going to get you. The lasers from the chair. Something's going to get you because there's not going to be anything. The scriptures say once this place is destroyed, there's not going to be anything remaining here. There's not going to be any uh, any person, any animal, any bird, any... No, nobody, even if they go down into a bunker, 75 feet underground, the Lord is going to cause something to get these people here in America because there will not be any inhabitants on the soils of America after the Lord brings the destruction. Amos 92, though they dig into hell, what does this mean? You have underground bunkers. You have something called dumbs, right? Let's look up dumbs. D-U-M-B-S. All right. Here, let's see. All right, I may have to put the periods because, let's see. Here we go. Uh, See, these are the dumb. See how this this is um, mountains and also uh, they've dug underneath the ground and cut into mountains these big openings and set up doors and everything like that for what? For in case of a nuclear blast. Because these devils know that destruction is imminent. But it's not really giving me... Let me see if I cut this out. Let me see what happens. Yeah, this is giving me a book. But the word dumb literally means deep underground military bases. You know, and when you're on... Uh, when you're on... Um, Google, they do... A, especially within the last few years, they've been doing a lot of uh, redirecting. Like, are you looking for something that's of importance, that's significant as far as truth is concerned? They're going to redirect you somewhere else, you know. But that's what dumbs mean, deep underground military bases. And the, the purpose for that is so that they have a place to hide. So the scriptures say, though they dig into hell, meaning you're trying to dig into the earth and set up these shelters, then shall mine hand take them. What is the hand of the Lord? It's either the missiles or the lasers from the chariots. It says, though they climb up to heaven, because what do they have in heaven? You have, <clears throat> you have um, uh, space stations, right? You have a space station. Let's go to images. And here you got, you got the space stations. All right. And what is the purpose of these space stations? So that they can be, they can go up in, in, in a rocket or up in a um, space shuttle and hide in this because they know that up is good, you know. So they're going to hide up in here, you know, and think that they're going to be um, protected. But the Lord said, what? It says, though they climb up to heaven, thence will I bring them down because that's, that's going to be your grave. This is going to be your grave. Those deep military underground bases are going to be your grave. It says, and though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, because you have um, uh, mountain uh, shelters. Let's see if so, see, uh, mountain. Uh, let's see bomb shelters. Let's see if anything comes up. 
Well, you have shelters here, uh, Cheyenne Mountain right here, Cheyenne Mountain Nuclear Bunker, that's the name of it, I couldn't think of the name of it, but this is it, that's a Cheyenne Mountain, you see how big this door is, you know, you see right there, it has a nuclear radiation uh, tag, you see these on certain buildings in New York, I'm not sure how, how they are in different other cities, but in New York, especially years ago, they would have these here uh, posted on different buildings that had basements that you could go to to so-called hide, you know, uh, for shelter. You know, so this is supposed to be a shelter carved into a mountain, right? But what, what did the Lord say? It says, and though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, I will search and take them out thence because there's going to be nothing left in America. When the scriptures speak about the, the Lord's going to sweep this place with the besom of destruction, you better believe he's going to, he's going to sweep all of this filthiness, all of this uh, uh, nastiness out of America also. Uh, and since the brother put the scripture, wow. You know what, I'm going to read a couple of these precepts that go with the, with the lesson. Wow, wow, wow. These brothers are, <laughs> these brothers are killing it. All right, so Yaiqua, uh, Yahawada, oh, uh, Salaki, I clicked the wrong one, but Shalom to you brothers also. Uh, I meant to click on Gabar Adama, uh, Isaiah fourteen fifteen. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the, uh, let's see if he put posted the verse before that. All right, you know what, so let's go to that. Let's go to that. That's a very good precept, but I want to get the verse above that. Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? All right, so let's go to it real quick. Uh, Isaiah 14. And... 13. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. And they've done that. Planes, uh, um, helicopters, rockets, uh, shuttles. I will exalt my throne above the stars of the Most High. Did not they put up their space stations and all that other stuff up there? I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation, which are the Israelites, in the sides of the north, North America. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. See? And they have. There's no other nation that have, has ever accomplished that feat, you know, to be able to be able to fly over the clouds. I've been in planes before. They fly through the clouds and then you see them flying above the clouds. It says, I will be like the Most High because that's what they're trying to be. They're trying to be like the Most High in every aspect of the word. It says, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit, meaning you're going to be brought down. Just like the city of Capernaum was exalted to heaven, they're going to be brought down. To hell, meaning to a low state, and that's what you—that's where you're going to be brought to, to a low state, because you're in a high, pompous position. See, that pomp is brought down to the grave, meaning your, your pride, the pride of Esau is going to be brought down to the grave, meaning you're going to be brought down, and you're going to be humbled, and the noise of the vi of thy vials, meaning this this lousy music that you have out here, it says the worm is spread under thee, which represents corrosion, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, or you Illuminati, you Illuminated ones? How have you fallen from that heavenly state, from having everything to having nothing? From rags, I'm sorry, from riches to rags. It says, son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground, which did is weaken the nation. So the Lord is going to bring you down. So if you climb up to, uh, if you go to, if you go up or if you dig into the earth, you, you build shelters down there, the Lord's going to get you. You build uh, shelters up in the heavens, the Lord's going to get you there. You carve out mountains and you put in shelters in the mountains, the Lord's going to get you there. I will search and take them out dense. And though they be hid from me, from my sight, in the bottom of the sea. So you got uh, underwater cities and bunkers and, and shelters that the Lord's going to get you. So no matter which way you go, you go this way, he got you. You go that way, he got you. You go the other way, he going to drop a dime on you. <laughs> uh, inside joke. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. See. Bomb shelters. Hmm. Let me try underwater. Let me try that. I 
I mean, this is in this is in a. Um, you know what they have the uh, the world, the world. Here we go. So here you got in Dubai. You have something called the world. And it's underwater, if I'm not mistaken, from what I remember. They have underwater, unless this one is above water, but they have something that's underwater where they have like cities underwater. So even if you have that out there, which Esau has its uh, capability of doing that, he'd be like, no, he doesn't. Well, look at uh, the, what is that, the, uh, what is that, the Lincoln Tunnel? The Lincoln Tunnel is underwater. You know? So no matter where you go, no matter what you do, no matter where you try to hide, the Lord is going to get you. You know, especially here in America. It says, And though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea, thence will I command the serpent, and he shall bite them. So Leviathan is going to get your monkey ass. All right, now let's move on to the brother Yahweh the Maccabees. Uh, Amos 5.18 Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light uh, As if a man did flee from a lion And a bear met him or went, or went into the house And leaned his hand on the wall And a serpent bit him So no matter what You might escape one situation You're going to find yourself in another situation And you're going to Then when you get away from that situation You're going to find yourself in another situation So there's going to be some people that are going to escape from different instances or different uh, perils, so to speak, that, are, that are, uh, uh, appear only to find themselves in another one. And once they escape all of those, at the end, they're going to meet with the nuclear missiles or the uh, lasers from the chariots. So something is going to get them. So you devils, you ain't going to escape, man. This is a good one, Gabar Adama. Ezekiel 32, 23, whose graves are set in the sides of the pit, and her company is round about her grave. All of them slain, fallen by the sword, which caused terror in the land of the living. Yeah, because you caused le uh, terror in the land of the living, and also that sword is going to cause terror in the land of the living. Matter of fact, building off of that, let's go to the same book of Amos, chapter 3. And six, shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? So what are those trumpets? Those are warnings that there's impending doom or impending danger coming. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? So if you hear the sound of the trumpet, something that that is, is a, 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 an alert that something serious is coming or some major catastrophe is coming, <coughs> people are going to get nervous. Shall there be evil in the city and the Lord have not done it? So that's building off of the the uh, scripture that the brother has here, you know, in Ezekiel. Uh, and then going back to the Yahawadah, uh it says, uh, verse 20, Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it? So what's going to happen? The only solution is what? To be out of here, you know? Uh, the brother... Um, Tazama said it shows you them flying into a mountain in the in the movie GI Joe. Yeah, because they <coughs> they have these mountain retreats, and <coughs> that's one of them, Cheyenne Mountain. <coughs> and I'm pretty sure they have others, but hey, some those shelters are gonna be the graves of those that run to it, because anywhere on the soils of America that you are, you're gonna be destroyed. Anywhere in the soils of the land of Israel where you are, you're going to be destroyed. And there's going to be certain places on, around, around the world that are going to get hit with certain devastation that whoever's there is going to be destroyed. But not everyone on the planet is going to die because the scriptures say that when the smoke clears, so to speak, there's still going to be people that are not going to repent of their murders and their thefts and their sorceries and their witchcraft and stuff like that. Uh, 
So back to the brother, uh, Revelation 6.15. And the, in the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every freeman hid themselves in the dens. What are these dens? Let's get that real quick. Revelation chapter 6. Matter of fact, I'm going to start at 12. I'm going to start at 12. This good priest that the brother put up. And I beheld, matter of fact, there's another one that came to mind. Uh, let me get that so I don't forget it. I think that's it, but I'll find out. Um, where are we at? Boom, burn that there. All right, so it says, uh, Revelation 6, 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. And what is this great earthquake? This great earthquake represents the destruction. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Excuse me, because the, the soot and the smoke and the fire is going gonna, is gonna to blot out in certain sections. It's going to blot out the sun. You're not going to be able to see the sun. It says, and the stars of heaven uh, fell unto the earth, meaning your, your celebrities and, and this pretty much this world. Because the scriptures say that Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. So there... The luminaries of this of this of this earth, and the scriptures say, "How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, O bright one, O O morning star, O Illuminati?" It says, um, "Even as a fig casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind." And what is that mighty wind? I'm talking about this destruction. So this is dealing with comparing uh, figs being shaken by a wind, but there is going to be an actual wind that's going to uh, bring devastation. Upon this place, which is a nuclear wind, I believe that's Jeremiah 51 and 1, if I'm not mistaken. Right, Jeremiah 51 and 1. Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashem El Shai, behold, I will raise up against Babylon, which is America, and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me, a destroying wind. What is that destroying wind? Wind? That besom of destruction that's going to sweep. From the missiles coming upon uh, this land. Let's get that real quick. Isaiah 14. And you see how the Spirit just built everything from one verse, from one precept that a brother put up. And you see how, how, how the lesson just built up? Um... Right here. Isaiah 14, 22, For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon, America, Babylon the Great, the name and remnant, uh, and son and nephew, saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashem El Shai, because the wicked will never rise again to fill the face of the earth with cities ever, ever again, as it says up above it. It says, I will also make it a possession for the, for the bittern, I mean, these are, these are different um, uh, creatures, and pools of water, and I will sweep it with the besom of destruction, saith the Lord Yahweh Yahweh Shai of hosts. So that is that destroying wind that's going to come sweeping across America. You can see that in different movies. You have um, Judgment Day, uh, Terminated Judgment Day, which was the second one. Then you have um, the one with uh, Nicolas Cage. Um, I can't think of the name of that one right now. But they show you them huddling up in the, in the living room, and you see the, the the wall of fire sweeping through New York and them different buildings and taking those buildings down, which that's what? That's the elements melting with fervent heat. That's that destroying wind. It says, And I will send unto Babylon fanners that shall fan her and shall empty her land, for in the day of trouble they shall be against her round about. So they're not going to be able to escape. Because these perils and these missiles and the, the chariots and the laser, man, this, it's going to be devastating. That's why Yahweh Shai said, I am come to send fire on the earth, and what will I if it be already kindled? So going back to Revelation 6.13, it says, When she is shaken of a mighty wind, and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. This is also mentioned in Isaiah, the 34th chapter, which is what they call a mushroom cloud. Boom, see? So this is what Isaiah saw. This is what the Apostle John saw. 
he saw the heavens roll together as a scroll. And that's what they saw. That nuclear destruction. And you look at, at, at the uh, clouds, they're rolled together. Like you roll a scroll together. This is what they saw. And they described it with what they had to describe it at that time. All right. So it says, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places because these, the government is going to be brought down because Yahweh Shai is coming to take over the government of Esau and make it his. He's, gonna, he's coming to take over the government of all of these different nations and make them his because they rightly belong to him. Uh, Revelation 19.11, and I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. This is dealing with Yahweh Shai. In righteousness he judges and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. So what are those many crowns? The many victories that he's coming. He's coming to take down all of these different nations that have anything to do with having an empire or a kingdom or a, a, a foothold, you know, of governance on the earth. You know, whether it be kings or nobles or whatever. And he had a, a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of the Most High because he's coming to do damage. This, is, this goes hand in hand with Isaiah 63. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, which are the uh, angels, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth the sharp sword, which, which we read about in uh, 2 Ezra 13. That blast that came out of his mouth. That with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he, and he treaded the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the almighty power. So he's coming, Isaiah 63. This is hand in hand, Isaiah 63. Uh, hand in hand, Revelation, I'm sorry, uh, Second Ezra 13. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Because this title was also given to individuals like uh, um, uh, Nebuchadnezzar and other kings that had governance over the kings of the earth at that time. But when Yahweh Shai comes this time, he's coming to take over every single king, lord, noble, you know, anything, anybody that has anything to do with any form of, of uh, uh, domination, dominion, rule, he's taking them all down. So it's all going to be given uh, uh, as a credit to him. All right. Uh, so every mountain and island were moved out of their place. Revelation six fourteen. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman and every freeman hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Because you have certain places where they have like a lottery, which they show you in the movie twenty twelve. Which pretty much the super rich are going to be the ones in there. But not just the super rich. Uh, not just the military. Not just government officials. That they plan on uh, for, for con uh, continuity of government. After the smoke clears. Because they think they're going to rebuild back up and everything. But you also have to have servants. Cooks. You know, uh, carpenters. Plumbers. Builders. You know different individuals. So these people that's in these different retreats. They're going to be put to death. See, the the the, the uh, so-called peasants or the servants, they're going to think, oh, wow, I'm, I, I'm lucky that I'm, I'm able to go with my master in, in this mountain. But guess what? That's going to be your grave. That's going to be your grave, dude. It says, and said to the mountain and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. Because Yahweh Shai is going, man, he's coming to get busy. He said he's going to roar, you know. He's going he gonna to let out a shout like a travailing woman. And it's going to be devastating, you know. That's why it says, uh, let's go real quick. Let's go real quick to uh, Luke 21. But let's finish this last verse. It says, for the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand? Woo! Luke 21, 25. It says, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the seas and waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken such as they, they never seen before. 
And these movies can capture a little bit of it, you know, through the imagination of Esau from reading the scriptures, but they cannot capture the full essence, the full power of what's going to come. And we could only do it part justice with, 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 with the words we speak and with the, with the scriptures. Because when, when the, to actually see it is going to be devastating. When the scriptures speak about the prophets getting sick or being scared or nervous, it wasn't because they read something. It's because they actually saw it. See? And that's why I said that when the, when the uh, righteous go up into the, into the chariots, they're going to be afraid, affrighted, but they're going to still give glory to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. So the, the prophets fainted. They got sick. They, they got, they were, uh, uh, their hearts were very fearful. Their minds troubled them. Because they actually saw the, the devastation, the destruction, the end. So in reading and breaking it down, we can only do it just so much justice. But when it's actually shown, that's when it's going to really uh, uh, get embedded into the minds of the people that this is it. And for a lot of them, it's going to be too late. It says, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with the power and great glory. So all of this stuff is going to be... It's going to be one thing after another after another as we read in Amos, the fifth chapter. It says, And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Revelation 18, chapter, uh, Rejoice over your apostles and holy uh, uh, prophets. You know? for the So, Revelation six seventeen, For the great day of, of, of His wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Because the only ones that are going to be able to stand are the elect, but these other nations, they're not going to be able to stand against the Lord. Their armies, no matter how great of a technology they have, they're not going to be able to stand against Yahweh Bashem Shai. So now let's go to this one real quick. Isaiah chapter 2. It says uh, in, her, uh, in 18, and, and the idols he shall utterly abolish, and they shall go into the holes of the rocks, which is go goes hand in hand with Revelation 6, and into the caves of the earth, for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty, when he arises to shake terror, be the earth. Because the earth is going to reel to and fro like a drunkard. So where's going to be the safest place to be? Up in the air. In the chariots. Excuse me. And that day a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which they made each one for himself to worship to the moles and to the bats. Yeah, because the scriptures say that gold and silver profited not in the day of wrath. So how much less a goddamn idol? That you got to carry around. That you got to dust off. It says to go into the clefts of the rocks. That's these different shelters. And into the tops of the ragged rocks. For fear of the Lord. And for the glory of his majesty. Because it's going to be glorious. When the, when, the, when the skies are full of chariots. And you see you have this big gigantic mountain. That's a chariot where Yahweh Shai is in. You know over, over the whole world. And people are going to. They devastated when they see little dots in the air. There are chariots flying around. So how much more when they see the total definition of these chariots and the and the uh, uh, and the shuttle ships and all of that? Come on, man. When he arises to shake terribly the earth, cease ye from man whose breath is in his nostril, for where for wherein is he to be accounted of? Uh, Isaiah twenty six and twenty. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment. Until the indignation be overpassed, meaning the righteous anger of the Lord. Because remember, the Most High, He's waiting patiently to release His His anger and His fierce wrath upon this place. But when it comes, it ain't gonna stop. That's why the prophet said, "Lord, and you know, in Thy wrath, remember mercy. You know, show mercy upon us when you start judging these people." It says, For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. Yeah, because you devils are going to pay. You know? You're not going to be able to cover things up anymore. Can you imagine the amount of, of injustices and wickedness and murders and, and things that happened to, to the, the uh, southern kingdom that were brought here that's not recorded? Can you imagine the, the, the devastation that, uh, that was put, put upon Gad and Reuben and Issachar all throughout th this land of America and uh, uh, up in Canada that is not recorded? The, 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 the shit that, did, that they did on the, on the islands of the Caribbean and Central America and South America that are not recorded? 
What we know only is what's recorded And that's only an estimation So the Lord said that the earth is not going to disclose the blood anymore Because now it's time This is part of your payment That's the beginning of paying your tab The destruction of your world And then afterwards Then you're going to go into captivity That's why all nations are going into captivity Because they all had a hand in it They all had a hand in, 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 our, in our sufferings and they're all going to be dealt with. Because remember, the Lord is coming back to do what? To, to bring to, uh, upon these people the uh, controversy of Zion. All right. So Revelation 11 and 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from the Most High entered into them. And this is why the Lord raised up his prophets. To do what? To, to uh, expose what has been done. The injustices. The wickedness that has been done. And to give the sentence to those that would uh, uh, suffer their fate in time to come. You've been, you've been go going scot-free since, since the inception of America. You've been going scot-free since you devastated the Indies, the so-called West Indies, you know, the uh, Central America, South America, North America, Canada, but you're not going to go unpunished. Jeremiah 28 and 8, the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. And this is what the prophets, this is why the spirit of life entered into them, to fulfill the, the prophecies of Yahweh Bashem and Shai. It says, um, and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them. Yeah, because when these devils look at us and they see the power of you know, and that we're not holding swords, we're not holding guns, we're not holding any type of uh, physical uh, uh, um, um, weapon, but all we're doing is preaching the Bible. They see the power and they're getting nervous because they know that their time is short. And this is why they're scrambling to set their so called New World Order up. All right. It says, and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in the cloud and the enemies beheld them. See? And that just goes hand in hand with uh, Wisdom of Solomon, the fifth chapter. So that's, this scripture here is what this is talking about. Revelation 18, 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. Not to get in a, pl a plane. Not to get a a, a, a um, passport, you know, which that was taught in the old school back in the days. But this is before the revelation of the chariots really uh, came to pass, you know. So there's there's levels to this thing, you know. So going back, it says uh, verse thirteen, Revelation eleven thirteen, and the same hour was there a great earthquake. What is that great er earthquake? The destruction. The same time that the, the, the elect are being beamed up into the chariots, the missiles will be flying. The lasers will be flying. It says, and the tenth part of the city fell, which is America, and the, and, and the earthquake were slain of men 7,000, meaning a complete amount of people will be destroyed here. And when the scriptures speak about the one-third and the two-third, the two-thirds being destroyed is only on the soils of America. Now you're going to have other Israelites around the world that are going to be destroyed, but the, what the one third and two third is dealing with specifically here in North America. And the remnant were affrighted. Why were they affrighted? Because of all of this devastation that's going on, and they're in the midst of it, looking at it, being beamed up. It says, And the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the power of heaven. You see? So they're going to, you know, the ones that are the elect, Lord's will, we all part of that, going to be glorifying and frantically. You see? Because of the, 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 the shit that's going on around and the, and the hope of, of you know, and, and the gladness and hope of being protected, you know, from all of this shit that's going on around and the elect having that force field around them to where nothing can hurt them. Uh, Psalms the 91st chapter. It's going to be glorious. And it's going to be very frightful. And this is why the prophets, it didn't say that the prophets read something that was so, they got sick from reading it. No, they really, the, the, the main part where they got scared and, 
And uh, sick was because they actually saw the vision. They saw the, the actual thing happening right before their eyes. And that's why it says that they, that, that they were affrighted, but still gave glory to the power of heaven. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right. Um, so pretty much, I mean, I, I, the, the point is made there. Uh, I'm going to finish it there because, um, matter of fact, I read a couple of verses here and close out because I, I have to, you know, run. Got to, you know, do something. Uh, but if the Spirit hits me later on, Lord's will, I could do another lesson. You know, see how the Spirit works. So let's read this again. Revelation 84. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues, because this place is, is done, finished. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and the Most High have remembered her iniquity. So now is the time. Now is the judgment. Now is the, the time when the Lord is about to bring forth uh, the devastation upon, you know, uh, uh, this place. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works. In the cup which she had filled, filled to her double. So she's going to get double. Alright? You can read, um, you can read, uh, Lamentation, the fourth chapter, the last two verses, uh, specifically for Esau, really for Esau's judgment, the last two verses. It says, how much he hath glorified himself and lived deliciously, and this applies to no one else but America. The other nations have not lived like this until they got with America and drank of that wine, sipped that Babylonian, Babylonian juice, was inebriated by the Babylonian juice with a slice of lime, you know? And now they're living lavishly. Why? Because they are selling their wares here. They bought into this uh, bullshit, and now they're benefiting from it. it. says, How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. And there's going to be a torment and much sorrow. Isaiah 47 chapter tells you that. When this devastation comes, cause you, cause, because can you imagine, for, for centuries, these devils have been building up to this point. Conniving, steve, uh, stealing, you know, deceiving, just, just doing all different type of underhanded shit, paying all exorbitant amount of money to get their new world order established, just to have it fall overnight before they even really get a chance to enjoy it fully. It says, "Woo, that's a good one." Wow, brothers, brothers. Uh, it says Isaiah twenty six and five. For he bringeth down them that dwell on high. The lofty city, he layeth it low, he layeth it low, <laughs> even to the ground, he bringeth, uh, he bringeth, he, he bringeth it even to the dust. Yeah, well, what does it say in Isaiah 47 and 1? Sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Uh, the brother, uh, wisdom of Solomon 319, for horrible is the end of the unrighteous generation. <laughs> wow. Yep, this is a good one too. Uh, Luke 13, 28. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of the Most High and you yourselves thrust out. Yep, that's right. Uh, yeah, that's, that's good. Uh, Neil, Philippians 4, 6-7. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto the Most High. And the peace of the Most High, Yahweh Bashem El Shai, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Alright. Um, so it says, uh, How much she has uh, she has glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen. And am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Because this is that harlot. And what is a queen? A prostitute. Think about it. Uh, let me read this one real quick before I read this last verse. Uh, it says, Ezekiel, Isaiah 9.19. Though the wrath of the... I'm sorry. Through the wrath of, of the Lord of hosts is the land darkened. And the people shall be as a fuel of the fire. That's right. No man shall spare his brother. Yeah, because the fifth verse... Speaks about how the ancient wars were fought, you know, with noise and blood on the garments and all that. But this war that's coming is going to be with uh, fuel of fire, which is uh, 
uh, the destruction. Therefore shall her place come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burnt with fire. She's going to become that burnt mountain. For strong is the Lord Yahweh Bashem Shai who judges her. So who's bringing the judgment upon him? Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right. So the only deliverance is up into the chariots out of America. All right. Uh, so with that, you know, I pray that your brothers have been edified through water for all the precepts and comments. Um, or actually, the, all the precepts brothers put up, you know, uh, and Barakatei Ha'oba Shemi Shai, you know, for allowing the lesson to go and uh, to build in the spirit. Uh, and to the next time I say Shalom.